There are plenty of video game enthusiasts that think that Dark Souls was some of the toughest bosses of all time. And when I say Dark Souls, I mean the first Miyazaki game that they have played. Because as we have discussed it previously, the Souls game difficulty scales very poorly past the first playthrough, which kind of explains the opening sentiment and why I think it is not correct. In other words, forget about Dark Souls. And welcome back to Neo, where we talk about some of the toughest bosses when it comes to the Abyss. First, yes, the Abyss. For those of you who still have not tasted the the joys of Neo. The Abyss is basically a boss rush mod featuring 9999 floors, with the difficulty being raised with every floor you clear. Upon entering the floor, you get a set of debuffs, so you're forced to make a decision whether you want to spend an extra moment to cleanse the debuffs by running a small side quest, or you just want to get to the boss and do the thing. Anyway, yes, the reason we're talking about toughest sons of bitches in relation to the Abyss is because the Abyss is technically the endgame for Neo, and I think that it is reasonable to measure the hardcoreness of the boss cast. In Neo by its endgame. Second thing is that to make this video twice as cool as it already is, in addition to naming the toughest bosses, I will also help you to come up with the strategy to defeat them with ease. There is no need for in-depth strategy guide or anything like that because all the bosses that I'm about to name share the similar nature. As much as I love almost every boss in Neo, we all know that even before the DLC came to be, fights against cool dudes in armor like Munishige were the most enjoyable ones. With the addition of DLC, we got the whole new breed of bosses, the motherfuckers with two guardian spirits that enjoy hanging in living weapon 24-7, which makes it very difficult to deal with them. Living weapon for bosses works in pretty much the same way as it does work for William. Not only these new gen bosses have two different living weapon modes to make it more confusing for you, they also tend to hang in it forever, making sure they can just grind you down in a split second with barely any effort, completely ignoring all of your action because they just can tank through it. So let's get to the list, starting with number 3. Maria. What an annoying bitch. Well, no, actually, I'm joking. Maria is my wife who and a lover. Seriously, she's packing pretty much everything that is needed to make a boss fight annoyingly annoying. She has the MLG360 projectiles that are kinda easy to dodge until she goes into the second phase and starts spamming them. She has the MLG360 blockable grab that just says fuck you if you try to get away from her. She also has that annoying 50 hit combo thing and all the fancy stuff. The actual reason why she's just number 3 is because she doesn't have 50 guardian spirits with annoying properties. Yet still, she can be a huge pain in your ass if you have no idea how to approach her. Number 2. Date Masamune Fuck everything about this fucker. He has everything that Maria has, except more. Two guardian spirits, the infinite lust for living weapon, super annoying moveset with weird combos and whatnot. Unlike Maria, he rarely gives you an opening in a close combat, even though he's very grab happy in the midrange. Yet, he can be a bitch to Kaid, since he tend to be really quick on his feet. More often than not, his annoying MLG 360 grab is gonna get your ball snatched, no matter how far you get away from him. So, you have to always be ready to dodge sideways if you're gonna try to break this and breaking the distance is often necessary, because he really likes to mash some random shit in close combat. In other words, don't fuck with this guy. But the number one, our number one, is the guy. I'd be damned if he wasn't the most hardcore gentleman to fight in Neo. Yes, it's the greatest, Yukimura Sanada. I really appreciate that Tim Ninja made him over the top hardcore the single most annoying boss to face in Neo, because it couldn't have been any other way. He has everything in his arsenal. Grabs that can snatch your breakfast from 9 miles away. Charge attacks with 50% extra phantom range. Weird close combat combos projectiles, an AOE attack that despite being slow has a huge fucking hitbox and will get you crushed if you're out of space to dodge it. Yukimura Sanada is the man. Both of his guardian spirits are really strong and despite them giving him very different options, both can be incredibly tough to deal with. Pair this with his infinite lust for living weapon, which means that you can't stagger him, but he will likely spear your genitals as soon as you stop blocking. And well, I mean, the guy is the greatest warrior in Japan, he surely does live up to the title. Oh by the way, did I tell you about his health bar? It's pretty much infinite. He has legitimately 50,000 billions millions of health, so in other words, if you're unprepared for the Yukimura experience, then you're gonna get demolished over and over over for quite some time. So this is my trio of toughest and most fun bosses to fight in Neo when it comes to its endgame content. And now, as I have promised, I will make all three of them extremely easy for you to deal with by simply sharing this one little trick. 
If you are an OG PlayStation 4 player like me, you might know it already, but I'm sure there are plenty of newcomers that are not aware of it. The trick is that all humanoid enemies in Neo are super weak to headshots, so this is the easiest way to deal with pretty much every humanoid boss that abuses living weapon. Get a good bow, with speed up, auto aim and some extra range, and just fish for headshots. Despite all these fellas being unstaggerable due to living weapon, they can actually be knocked out of it with one well placed headshot, which leaves them vulnerable for the final blow or the ice strike or whatever your to go strategy is when it comes to beating the samurai on the ground. So let's start with Maria. Since we're talking Abyss, the most obvious window for the headshot is right when you enter the arena. You can headshot her right after she pops the living weapon. Pretty simple. The next best window to get it done is when she starts to throw her shitty projectiles out. As soon as she gets her sword up in the air, prepare to dodge and headshot her. Again, very simple. However, it gets harder with the other two fellas. In case with Masamune, it's both of his spirit attacks, but be careful with the water one, since it can be hard to capitalize on the headshot without taking any damage. You can punish his grab with a headshot on whiff, and in most cases is the best strategy against him, since he really likes to use it in mid-range. Just dodge it to the side and try to land a bullseye. However, the easiest option of all is his 3 slash overhead slam combo. Once he finishes it, it is very, very easy to headshot him. As for Sonata, things are very spicy. For the wind spirit, the easiest way to headshot him is after the AoE plunging attack. For fire, you can use the fast plunging attack, but it's kinda risky. Much safer option again is to use the window presented by the guardian spirit attack. Or in case with the fire spirit, it is the charge pistol shot that has almost 9000 billion frames of recovery. And again, once you see him started up, be ready to knock an arrow and prepare to mash him on the ground. So with that in mind, you should have no problems dealing with those three since you are now able to essentially eliminate the crucial part of their strategy, the living weapon. Obviously everything regarding the difficulty is subjective and is presented as my opinion, but something tells me there is a reason why Tim Ninja put Sonata and Masamune duo as the final duo in the Abyss, because they probably share my sentiment, at least in regards to those two. But what about you? What's your take on the Abyss bosses and whom do you find to be the most annoying boss to fight. Let me know the name and I'll do my best to help you to deal with them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you.